Hey guys, Chris here from DataVids again. I'm going to talk to you today about Git and how to merge down from one branch into another branch and resolve those conflicts. Alright, let's get started. I might talk to you a little bit about branch structuring too, but mostly just about Git and resolving merge conflicts. Alright, let's get started. Alright, so just getting started. I want you to always um, know where documentation is. Anything I show you in my videos, you know, you're always going to have questions about more advanced features. And while you're more than welcome to ask them in my videos, it's best to know where the official documentation is um, to get your answers firsthand. So if you just go to git-scm.com and click on documentation, you'll see a reference manual here. And this is where you can go in and get all your Git commands. Everything that you do in Git can be done in the command line, but there are also user interfaces to do this. Um, I know that Visual Studio has them, Eclipse has them. Um, there's a Git UI that you can download from, I believe it's from Git. Um, all these commands are available in the terminal, and that's how I believe most developers do it that are really serious about getting into Git and making things work. But 90% of the time, if you're working on code, you're going to be using these here commands. Fetch, pull, oops, <laughs> fetch, pull, and push. That's the commands used. Whenever you make changes, um, you're going to push them up to the cloud. But the way Git works is you have a local repository and you have a cloud repository. You clone the cloud down to your local computer so you have a copy of your code. You work on your code, you make changes, and you push it back up to the cloud. Now other people may be working on their own copies of that cloud, and that's where conflicts could come in. There's way more to it than that. I haven't talked about branching or anything. But those are the three main commands. You pull down from the cloud. I'm sorry, you fetch to see what changes have been made since the last time that you pulled down your code. Um, and then you pull to pull those changes that you fetch. So fetch is kind of like a peak, right? And then push is to push your changes back up to the cloud. Um, if you're in Visual Studio, you might see a sync button that does a fetch, then a pull, then a push. Um, some other things that you'll definitely use is branch ch and checkout. And All right, so just a quick conceptualization before we get into what I really want you to see, which is the merging, like I've been saying. Let's say you've got a repository, okay? Now, if you, um, if you pull it down to your local computer, you need to pull down a specific branch of that repository. So, if you take that code and you always have um, a master, right? Let's just call this our our master branch because that's what um, the first thing that you build. So we'll call this the the master. Then, if you create a branch, which is basically an entire copy of that, um, that could be your development branch. Um, and then you might have a couple of people working on it. So then, from there. Uh, it might just be you or it might be a couple people. Each one of them can create their own branch. Let's call it um, Bob and, um, and Jane. So Jane makes changes and, uh, and, and, and Bob makes changes. So let's say um, it's ready for Bob to work on. So Bob will then um, pull down the development branch to his workstation. But he's not cloning the development branch, he's cloning the project and then choosing which branch to work on from that project. So he's cloning the repository of the project, which is this whole thing. And then when he's working in that project, he will choose the branch um, Bob to work on. If it doesn't exist, he can create Bob based on development. Um, so then when he's done working on his local branch and he's ready to push it up to the cloud, Bob will push up to development. If Jane created her branch while after Bob did, but made changes to it and already pushed them up here, it depends on if they worked on the same file as to whether Bob and Jane will have a conflict when pushing up to development. Even if they worked on the same file, as long as they didn't modify the same parts of the file, Git is going to be smart enough to identify that it can merge it on its own without any conflicts. So. Let's say you have a file um, with several lines in it, and line one, two, and three are modified by Jane, and lines four, five, and six are modified by Bob. There's not going to be an issue. 
but if they both worked on the first two lines or they both worked on this line, then it's going to pop up on the screen with whatever editor you're using and it's going to ask you to select um, which one you want to take when you commit those up. Um, an alternative route that you could take is if you think there might be merge conflicts, just to save yourself some headache, is you can merge from uh, the development branch back in, down into your branch and, and solve the, um, the conflicts locally in your own branch instead of trying to solve them when you push them up to the development. When you push your changes back up to the cloud, to, uh, to the, the branch that you created yours from, uh, that's called a pull request. So you're requesting that the changes that you made in your branch be pulled into the, the parent branch. Now, you can pull from your branch and skip the parent branch that you created your branch from. You can do a pull request directly from the master branch all the way down to whatever structure you're on. Um, however, whoever is controlling this branch policy uh, might say, hey, I don't ever want um, uh, a, a user's changes to be pulled directly into master. I want them to go to some intermediary branch first. And that's going to be controlled by your organization or by whoever's in charge of your project. So let's say it's a personal project at home, whoever's in charge of that project, right? So uh, that's kind of a quick and dirty, but now I'd like to switch over to Visual Studio um, to show you how this really works with code. So here in my Visual Studio, I've got a project called Party Vote. Um, and if you look at it, I'm in the master branch. Now, if I go to um, branches and look at the remote, there is Chris1 and Chris2, which are two branches that I just now created based on uh, my master branch. Actually, I created a dev branch based on the master branch, Chris1 and Chris2 based on dev. But because I just created them all right now, all, three, all four branches actually contain the exact same code. And I could pull any which direction, I could merge any which direction. But to give it some structure, I'm going to say that my feature branches can only merge into dev, and my dev branches can only merge into master. Now, because I'm using Microsoft DevOps, I can actually set up branch policies in there uh, by, by uh, going to my DevOps, clicking on repos, going to branches, hitting the three dots next to the branch I want to work on, and clicking on branch policies. Now, this is a software as a service product, and Microsoft might change some of these features. They change them all the time. But I could definitely um, put some checks and balances in here. All right, just going back. So let's say I make some changes in Chris 1, and then I'll make some changes in Chris 2, and I'll show you what those merge conflicts look like. So let's switch over to the Chris 1 branch. And I'm going to go to my Solution Explorer by going to Home and double-clicking the solution file, opening the solution tab. Now let's modify um, the project file with both branches. We're going to modify this, um, this toaster.cs file. I'm going to make a change here on the same line, because remember I said over here in our paint diagram, if we modify the same line, it's going to create a conflict. So let's say I'm going to put a I'm going to put on the same line as the method header, I'm going to put a comment. My comment A. And I'm going to save this file. And I'm going to go back to Team Explorer, Changes, make a comment about my change. And it looks like I changed something else recently, so just disregard that. Let's just say, this is my first change. And uh, whenever you make a comment, you want to typically say why you changed it, not what you changed it, because everybody knows what you changed, because they can always go to the version history and compare the files. So uh, I made this because I was told to. Uh, and I'm sure you can come up with a better comment than that. So commit all, commit all the, the two changes I had there. And now I'm going to push them to the cloud. So if I go to the sync tab, there's my change with my message, and I'm going to push it. It's now pushing it from my local feature branch called Chris1 into the Chris1 branch in the cloud. Um, I think the way, if you're looking at this through Visual Studio, I believe also if you're looking at it through one of the other Git tools, 
it shows remote slash origin. Those are the ones that are out in the cloud. And then everything above that in this, in this user interface are my local branches. Okay. So now let's go ahead and um, check out Chris2. So as you see down in the bottom right, I've switched to Chris2. Now I'm going to hit the home button, go back to the solution. Probably didn't need to do that. The solution was already open. I'm going to go back to the toaster CS file. As you can see, the changes aren't showing here because we're in a different branch of the code, a uh, different copy of the code, different branch. I'm going to make a different comment. My comment number two, uh, or I said A, so B. I'm going to save the file. We go to Team Explorer Changes. Um, I made these changes because I wanted to, as opposed to I was told to. Because remember, our comments are about why we made the changes, not what the changes are. And just real quickly, a quick tangent to show you what I mean by that. If I go back to Branches and I right click on Chris2, I can go to View History and I can see what the changes were. I can double click this commit and see which files were changed. I can right click that file, I can compare that file with the previous version and it will show me that I added my comment B. That's what I changed in that file. All right, so we've got our, our commit. We're ready to push it up to the cloud. I'm going to the sync tab. I'm going to click push. Now it's pushed up to the cloud. I'm going to switch back over to my Microsoft DevOps because that's how I'm managing Git. Um, a lot of you viewers may be using Eclipse or something else, or you may just be using um, command line to control Git in the cloud and locally. That's fine. The same concepts apply, but it, it may be a little different. I can help you if you want. Shoot me a message. So now let's go ahead and do a pull request. The pull request, if you remember from Paint, is we're going to pull it from Chris1 up into the dev. So let's do a new pull request. We're going to pull from feature Chris1 into dev. It pre-populates things for you. Um, if you're using this for managing projects and whatnot, you probably have a whole bunch of work items. I didn't set anything like that up. And if you're on a team, you'll put your teammates here. And you can put tags, things like, oh, this is a security item. This is a database item. All right, I'm going to hit create. Now, everybody who's out there that's assigned to review your pull request will get an email. Um, again, that's kind of a Microsoft-specific piece, but um, still very helpful. So now everyone that wants to review this pull request can look at the files, and they'll see um, here's my toaster and uh, my file, and I've made that comment. I'm going to go ahead and approve it. Uh, and then I'll complete it. When I hit complete, what's going to happen is it's going to merge um, from Chris1 into dev. Now Chris1 and dev are the same. And I deleted the branch. It was a checkbox on <laughs> that merge. Uh, unfortunately, I did not mean to do that. But it doesn't affect this, uh, what I'm trying to show you. So when you, if, once you're done merging um, a feature branch, a lot of times people delete the branch. Uh, so now we're going to go back to Chris2, and I'm going to uh, try to do a pull request of Chris2 into dev, and we're going to get a merge conflict. And I'll show you how we can, how we can resolve that. So let's go do a pull request. I'm going to do a new pull request from Chris2 into dev. And once I hit create, you'll notice there's one merge conflict. Um, and you can look at the conflicts here, or you can do what I was recommending earlier, which is to go back to Visual Studio. In Chris2, we're now going to go to Merge. So if I go to the Sync tab, actually, sorry, the Branches tab, and I click Merge, I can merge from Origin Dev, which is Dev in the Cloud, back down onto feature. That is going to pull down all the changes that were in Chris1 into Chris2, allow us to select which ones we want before the pull request so we can handle all of those conflicts here on our own, in our own branch, without the cloud. So let me close this so there's no confusion here. 
uh, because, because what that merge that that uh, merge we were just looking at was actually our from our view history, which is going to be similar but different as far as a user interface, but much different concept. So I'm going to hit merge, and it says it's already up to date. It's already up to date because it doesn't know any better. We haven't pulled anything down from the cloud. So let's go and fetch and pull. And this is just updating the repository as a whole. You'll notice nothing came up when I did the fetch and pull as far as the list of commits that need to come in. In my opinion, that's a bug, but it's really just telling you that the reason it didn't show up is there's nothing in the Chris2 branch to pull in, but there is stuff in the, in the project to pull in, like the metadata that tells you um, what's in those other branches. So now if I go to branches and I do merge just like I did before, I'm going to merge from origin dev Dev in the cloud to feature Chris locally, and I'm going to hit merge. I unchecked the commit because I want to show you all the steps. As you can tell, now a merge operation is in progress, and there are conflicts to resolve. And Visual Studio does a really good job of showing this stuff. So there's one conflict I can click right on it. I can see Toaster and Toaster.cs was modified in both places. So I can click compare files. Visual Studio has its own uh, compare tools, very nice. There are other ones out there. You can set them up in your, in your tools up here uh, to use a different one. A lot of people use WinMerge. I just use the Visual Studio one these days. Um, right away, I can just say, I want to keep the one that's in the cloud, or I want to keep the, the one that's here in my local file. But most of the time, you're going to click compare files because you want to see what's different. So if I click here and I just move over to the right, I can see um, up here at Origin Dev has my comment A, and Chris2 has my comment B. So at this point, you'll know which one you want to take. Um, and if there are multiple issues on multiple lines, then you might want to pick one line at a time. So up here, in my toolbar, I've got previous difference, next difference. If there's lots of issues in one file, I can click this to, to go through the, go through them. But in this case, there's only one, um, and so I can also choose to take right and take left. Um, in this case, I'm just going to take the whole file. I'll take the Chris two. There are no remaining conflicts, so I can click Commit Merge. It puts it out here in my changes. Um, so I'll say. I merged with uh, my changes because they were the correct changes. I, I don't know, you probably have something more interesting to say. Commit, commit staged, because it staged those changes for you. Now you can go to the sync tab, and there you have it. And you can click sync, which will do fetch, push, and uh, fetch, pull, and push all at once. Or I'm just going to hit push because I know that's all that there is to do. And if I come back over to Visual Studio, it refreshed on its own. And now everything's pushed into the dev branch. So now you could pull from dev into master with the current setup. So that's how you resolve merge conflicts, a really simple merge conflict. Um, there's a whole lot that you can do with Git. We kind of, I don't want to say we just scratched the surface because we did cover a lot of the really basic stuff that you're going to do on a day-to-day -day basis. If you're interested in me making a more uh, in-depth video, um, please do in the comments. Tell me exactly the topics that you're interested in with Git. I'm very happy to do those for you. And let me know if you want them done command line or visual or both. All right, well, thank you, and have a wonderful day. Bye.